G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and we're down the back of the veggie garden today in my sort of mongrel area. It's a really hot, it's not that humid but it's hot and dry. It's got a dry wind blowing through so I hope that doesn't play too much havoc with the mic. The back end of the garden I've got my compost heap, a couple of banana trees, like a manure pile that I've covered over and these three beds plus a trellis here that I sometimes use but this area here I generally use for sort of ad hoc stuff um, like I leave sweet potato roam free I grow some rosellas down the back here which is the large rosella plants um, my compost pile like I said even got the odd you know thing that goes to seed like mustard and I've got a carrot here <laughs> a purple carrot that's just come up um, rubbish really go in the compost heap it doesn't grow too well in when you don't really uh, plan for it but what I did plan to do was grow some potatoes through winter in this bed here I used three quarters of the bed for potatoes and I've used the last quarter for some onion and garlic but what I want to talk about today is harvesting these potatoes in this bed so I'll bring you in a little bit closer and We'll have more of a chat about it and then we'll get into harvesting and see what we've got out of it. But before we have a chat about the harvesting, let's go back in time and I'll show you what I planted. They're the Kipfler and the other ones are the Royal Blues. I hadn't planted either of these ever before, so I was keen to have a go at them. They're only a one kilogram bag each of seed potatoes, which means they're certified seed so that they're not going to have any diseases. So I just spread them apart about 30 to 40 centimetres each potato. Um, I don't have any real exact measurements, that's all I do. And as you can see, I've planted them also in this mulch bed of chip, wood chip. Now this is, this is really thick wood chip, I'd say a good six inches of wood chip on top of this bed from stuff that I had mulched up myself. And I wanted, you know, I was keen to see how it would go. I've had success lately with growing in wood chip with other crops. So I thought maybe the potatoes would go well. And so I dig a hole about six to 12 inches through this mulch into the soil and then plonk the potato in. And then I just left it grow and that's about it. And about the only other tip I'd give at this stage is not to overwater them until you see the first sort of shoots coming through and then that's fine to water about once a week. Overwatering can cause potatoes to rot. Well I know this wind is going to play havoc with my mic but I'll just have to push through if that's okay with you guys. So as you can see here's the potato bed in front of me and you can see some plants growing here. Now a few weeks ago there was nothing. The, the potatoes that I planted like four months ago in winter, they had died back and it was pretty much like this bed here. It was nothing, it was completely bare and uh, there was some dry plants on top which I removed along with some weeds. Here's another weed here that I just pulled out and it was a pretty well a dry bed. So I've been meaning to dig in here and harvest this out. In the meantime, unfortunately, some of the potatoes obviously have re-sprouted and are coming through which is a bit disappointing for me because I was I didn't want that to happen but in a subtropical climate you know you can tip you can grow potatoes basically all year but they don't grow great through summer so they will start growing and sprout like this and not grow great and then the middle of summer which we're just at the start of summer now um, we're actually still in spring but just about to hit the cricket season and the hot summers once the summer hits here all these will suffer and probably die back I mean sometimes you can go all right some potato varieties will grow well through a subtropical summer like this but generally they don't so I didn't want this to happen I should have harvested these earlier but anyway, we'll see. So what I'm going to do now is harvest them all, see if I can salvage some of these sprouted potato plants and replant them in, say, a third of the bed and see how much we've got. Oh, here's the first one. 
purple starting to sprout but uh, yeah eaten a little bit by something looks like some type of caterpillar or something got into it maybe a slug but that's still quite edible give you guys a closer look as we go nice sized potato that one yeah good one nice soil look at this beautiful worms this uh this thick mulch really helps okay that one's all right that one's not starting to sprout i'm actually getting potatoes off these new plants and they've only been growing for a few weeks they look fairly very young and new but I'm actually getting some good potatoes off them and Mike's be wonder if I shouldn't have just left them in there um, and cut my losses all right so here we go there's the harvest quite frankly I reckon at least half or more have been spoilt because they've started to reshoot again it's still not bad still a good you know, a couple of kilos or three or four kilos of potatoes. At least, yeah, maybe five kilos of potatoes, that's fine. Um, they're gonna taste delicious, but really I left it go too long. That's my error. But it's not all lost. Let's see if I can't get a summer crop. The soil's really good here. I'll throw in some extra fertilizer, a bit of blood and bone, and I'll replant all these ones that have half eaten by worms and have started to shoot already. Uh, and gone light and no good to eat. I'll replant all of them, mulch back over the bed, and let's see if we can't get maybe a summer crop of potatoes. It's quite possible that we could get, you know, a good crop of young potatoes. Uh, the plants might grow okay for, you know, a month or so and then die off rather quickly in the heat. Um, but we can only try. It, it, you know, sometimes the potatoes will go dormant through the middle of summer and then start coming up again in winter. That happens as well. So it's not all lost, but I'd say the overall lesson that I've got is when they have died back, the potatoes, harvest them immediately in this climate. Don't let them sit in the soil, otherwise uh, at this time of year they quite possibly will reshoot and ruin your crop. Okay, let's smooth this bed out a bit first. Just evenly smooth it out. I can see lots of potatoes all scattered throughout the bed here. I'll smooth it out. Yep, that'll do. And now I'm going to grab all those potatoes from my garlic patch. And I'm going to plant them willy-nilly. I'm not going to be too careful. Just going to dig a hole, throw them in. And even these plants here, see how we go. Dig them real deep, throw them in. Hopefully they'll survive, give them enough water. Rightio, so there's the Kepler and the Royal Blue, which more, looks more like a purple to me, washed and harvested. Yeah, a little bit disappointing, but you know, it's not an overall disaster, is it? There's still a good five kilos or so of potatoes here for us to enjoy. And it's likely that I will get another harvest out of those potatoes that I've replanted. We'll see how that goes. I'll keep you guys updated on on how that bit actually does go. Has the wood chip made a big difference in my opinion? Um, maybe in locking in the moisture. I think the thick mulch did help to lock the moisture in. I, from past potato harvests, I haven't seen like extra growth or anything just because I've used wood chip. Uh, I thought the plants grew very healthily through the season. 
They looked nice and green. I expected that I was going to get a fairly good harvest. I was quite excited about the harvest until they re-sprouted. Then I was concerned and for a good reason because I lost, I lost half my harvest. If I didn't leave it re-sprout, I probably would have ended up with a really excellent harvest out of that wood chip bed. And so, yeah, I suppose compared to some of the other harvests I've had and growing them in not wood chip, I suppose the wood chip did help. Uh, I can see by digging in that soil there that the moisture was, was still good. The soil was nice and black. It, um, yeah, it seemed like an enriched bed, even though it's just had a big crop of potatoes. Wood chip certainly doesn't hurt as a mulch for a potato bed. So I would give that a thumbs up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. Not all gardening goes to plan. In fact, I'd say 50% doesn't. But that is gardening for you. Sometimes you have a great crop and you don't know why. Sometimes you have a great crop and you do know why. Sometimes you have a bad crop and you think, I've done everything right, what's happened? You know, <laughs> that is gardening for you, I'm afraid. And that's what sort of makes it so fun too. It's the unpredictability of what am I going to get, you know, and growing new things and different types of potatoes that I haven't grown before. You know, that's exciting. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I hope that wind hasn't played too much of a havoc with the mic. But anyway, <laughs> that's what you get in a hot, windy day in subtropical Queensland. Don't forget to check out the website selfsufficientme.com. Bye for now. Thank you.